just want to talk about a deal that I have and I guess on the upfront part of it the leads are coming in nicely the Facebook thing is working great uh, getting the sellers through the script but here's um, what's happening and I want to see if there's a glitch here that I'm missing because it is virtual and I think I might know where the step is a disconnect and this was brought up to me by someone else on this call as well about a week ago saying they were having the same problem and I was like wow that's weird let's talk about it on Tuesday so here's what's happening um I am getting through the whole closing script with a sub two with a carry back okay on this particular deal read it the first time yes sounds good okay send over the purchase and sale agreement. He was very eager to do it. The carry back was like 60,000. Um, so when I went through the virtual walkthrough, I went through the script again. I said, okay, so this is how it works. He said, yes, great. But he's so eager and I just had a deal fall apart right before closing. So my call is about how not to let the deal fall apart right before closing because they weren't clear that it's a carry back and not getting paid out at closing. That's what my call is about. Yeah. So this is my fear because mm -hmm. I don't want to pay um, the title and lean search again like I did last time. I waste all this money, but I know you're never mm -hmm. ever guaranteed. Mm -hmm. So he sent back over the agreement. He wants to move in the 30 days. So since I can't get out to the house and have a face-to-face -face deal meeting with him where I usually would have brought up going over the agreement. Okay, now it never gets brought up again. And also my second question to that is the 90 days. I mean, you put it on the agreement, but there's nowhere in the script up front where you actually say, so you're okay with making that payment when I, after you move. So therefore it's in the agreement, but we've never talked about it. He didn't say anything about it. He's gonna move and then he's probably gonna go, what the hell? So here's my two areas of concern. I don't wanna get again, 30 days into this. And this guy goes, what? You know, I'm not getting 60,000 right now, screw you. Okay, mm -hmm. but then again, mm -hmm. I don't wanna bring it up right now and make a can of worms and act like, do you really know this? And act like it's a bad thing and then call myself out mm -hmm. on something. So how do you handle that? Yeah, so two issues. Number one, you need to make sure the seller understands when he's getting that 60K. And it's like Ron taught us back in the day when you go to the deal meeting and you could do this on your video walkthrough or whatever, is you get them to explain to you what their understanding of the deal is, right? So, Mr. Seller, you're okay with everything we've discussed on the phone here, I assume? Right, right. Okay, well, just to make sure we're on the same page, I'd like for you to just repeat back to me how you understand this deal going down. And that'll very quickly and clearly uncover any misunderstandings there. So that should handle your first question. The other question is um, the 90 days and no payments that's pre-printed on the agreement. So the written agreement should always just be a reflection of the meeting of the minds that you and the seller have had. So you, you wouldn't want to like put that in there if you hadn't uh, already discussed that with the seller and they agreed to that. You see what I mean? So that's where you would typically, and the way Ron teaches it, you do that at the deal meeting as well. So you would do that at the video walkthrough. And when you're walking them through the contract, just doing it virtually as opposed to in person, and um, you would just point that out. Now, if he balks at that, then it's just another point of negotiation. Maybe go down from 90 days to 60 days to 30 days or whatever, or just take it out completely if you want to. You see what so I that's mean? before the agreement is over to them. This is the walkthrough, and we have the conversation after the walkthrough. The agreement is not in his hands yet. Am I correct? You could do it. So the way I picture it is yeah. while you're doing the video walkthrough, you want to – basically you're trying to simulate that in-person deal meeting, right? So while you're right. on the video walkthrough, you send him the document via DocuSign and you go over it there together while you're on the video call or phone call or whatever, just like you would in person. Okay, all right, so the video walkthrough entails agreement going over to him while we're walking through. And as much as possible, it? yeah. Sometimes they have tech issues. That's like right. I'm talk on the phone and yep. do the document. Yeah, all that stuff. So, you know, you just got to work around those logistics. Maybe they got to go back to their computer and then you send it to them and then you go through it with them while they're on the phone with you. And you just walk them through it. So you just are that. always going over the agreement with them on the phone before they sign it and send it back. Am I correct? I definitely would. I never want to just send an agreement to somebody by email and in the email, I'm like, all right, get this back to me whenever you can. 
No, I want to like call them on the phone. Hey, are you at your computer? Okay, I'm going to send the agreement right now. Let me know when you got it. Okay, you got it. Okay, good. Open it up. Let's go ahead. And I just want to point out everything that you and I have already agreed to. We put that in here so you can know you're, you know, signing the right doc here. And are you putting a time sensitive? Because lately I've been saying, well, if I'm going to pay your clothes, I'll pay your closing costs if you can get, if you can review it, feel good about it, sleep on it and get it back to me by tomorrow by 5 p.m. I'll pay the closing costs if you can get it back to me by tomorrow. Is that fair? Is that what you normally say? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Do you put That's a time good. on it? I understood before you did not, if I remember correctly. I I never did. Jeff, Jeff likes to, but I want to get him to sign it while I'm on the phone with him right there. Oh, just like I would if oh, I was oh, in okay. person, right? Mm -hmm. Like if we just walked through it on the phone, yeah. he's looking at it. and Why wouldn't he sign it right then? Mm -hmm. Because know? he'll say, Unless my he wife isn't here with me. I have to wait till, you know, I find, I get her, you know, some stupid stuff like that. Well, you do that call yeah. with the wife. Yeah. You don't, you don't do partial calls on the buy or the sell side unless you're dealing with all of the owners, all of the decision makers. That would be right. ideal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got it. Okay. This is where there was a disconnect. So yes, I, I understand mm -hmm. this and I like this. Okay. Now. When I'm doing these, I feel like I basically are, I'm going to go owner finance if they don't have the mortgage. And if they do, I'm pretty much leaning towards sub two with the carry back. Now, I know Ron loves to do the wraps. I'll do the wrap if they're going to go get a mortgage, perhaps so I don't cut them out of getting that mortgage. But if I'm understanding it correctly, do you mostly do the sub two with the carry back? You kind of stay away from the wraps unless you have to. Am I right, Blair? Owner finance and sub two with carry backs are your two main things? Yes. Because, okay, because I just want to know when you say that, you'll get that money when we cash out down the road, that that's mostly okay with most of the people you're talking to. So if I'm not yeah. getting enough deals and I'm getting a ton of leads, then it's just because I'm not, I feel like I'm not talking to enough people. I'm just not have enough in the pipeline to say yes to get two or three a month. That could be the only reason because I understand everything else. I'm doing it, you know, for a while now. So mm -hmm. I'm just... yeah. Okay. Uh, how, what is your uh, conversion rate? Like how many leads do you get in a month versus how many contracts? Um, we're getting, well, since, sa I'll just, since Saturday, I got 12 leads in since Saturday afternoon. And that was uh, as of this morning, that's 12. So we'll get another five or six through the week from that Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I get maybe a week, I'll get at least two that I can send contracts over. Um, mm -hmm. But they're falling apart, and I'm not getting there like I should be. Yeah. So You're not I'm disappointed the in the end right now. I just got to fix that one block. Once I get that block fixed, I'll be good. So I think You're this not is the what it was. Line, What's that? Yeah. You're, You're not. You're not getting the meeting of the minds. You're, you're not getting, you don't have an agreement with the seller. You're sending them paperwork and you're expecting the paperwork to do the job you're supposed to do. And I say it again, Jeff, I'm sending the paperwork and what? You're, I think you're sending the paperwork and expecting it to do the work that you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So you're going to need to get in there and be really forthright with those people right up front and say, okay, here's how this deal works. You know, if you're okay with it, let's sign right now. I agree. Yep. I've come so far, but now I'm at that finish line and I'm falling down right before the finish line. Well, here's and the it's difference. Okay. <laughs> In the old days when you were buying for cash uh, and rehabbing yourself, you could throw out an offer by mail or email or whatever and give people a limited time and, you know, you'll get a certain number of takers because you're basically putting out a bid. When you, when you do that in the seller finance business, you're you're giving the impression that this isn't as big of a hurry as it is, as it really is. And so Blair's absolutely right. You want to try and get them on the phone, mm -hmm. go through the contract, sign it now. Got it. Big difference. Yes. Yeah, See, there, one little thing. Fun. You know, are all the decision makers going to be on this, this video call, this video walkthrough? No, not everybody. Okay. Let's reschedule to when everybody will, because you may get the husband sold on it and he may just shake his head and not know what he's talking about. And then the wife gets involved and she's like, absolutely not. Why would mm -hmm. you do that? Mm -hmm. And you don't have the benefit of answering her objections at that point. It's too late. Wow. Damn. 
So close, yet so far away. I'll get this fixed, though. Yeah, yeah fixed. the good news is you are you are really close. I know. Uh, I, I see e Enoch is typing in the chat. This is his problem, too, so you're not the only one. And there was someone else that called me, so that's not even the person. And I'm going to keep it quiet, but okay. they'll, they'll speak up when necessary. <laughs> okay. <laughs>